And I felt that when it says when God has gone out before his people, there is movement. I'm a great believer in movement. I believe that when we are stuck, something is wrong. God is always moving. He says, I'm going from glory to glory. Hey everybody, my name is Angie Morenga. You're watching Just Angie. It's the Sunday sermon. It's the ninth day of May. It's my mom's 80th birthday and it's the, my parents' anniversary. So mom, we celebrate you out there. Thank you for all the years of marriage. I even forgot how many they are now. Um, but and thank you for your birthday. We celebrate God, God for you. Very, very um, amazing. And you're 80 years old today. So happy birthday, mom. Um, today, my scripture is from Psalm 68. So there was, there was, um, remember I told you I did this for seven days. So this is like day three, four somewhere. But this is um, Psalm 68, which I loved. But I think I'll follow what I've written out here because I may not be able to get all of it. But you read the whole of Psalm 68. And you know, sometimes, I don't know whether you're like me, sometimes you open the word, you're like, Kai, this Psalm is here and I've even forgotten so many. How did I forget this uh, Psalm? But I love the way it starts. It says, may God arise. And may his enemies be scattered. May his, flows, his foes flee before him. And may you blow them away like smoke. As wax melts before the fire. May the wicked perish before God. Hallelujah. Can I get an amen? So right now, if that's what you need to do, if you feel like the world is just crashing in, is just coming in in ways that you cannot imagine, stand up and decree Psalm 68. May God arise, may his enemies be scattered, may his foes flee before him. May you blow them away, God, like smoke, as wax melts before the fire. May the wicked perish before God. But may the righteous be glad and rejoice before God, and may they be happy and joyful. And I thought that was so amazing. Not only does he want us to be glad, but he wants us to be happy and joyful. So I feel like I pray that your countenance changes. And, and you know, sometimes we, we can even be responsible for changing that countenance. That God wants us to be happy and to be joyful. It says, sing to God. Remember in all these sermons, singing is always there. Joy is always there. Nations are there. Kings are there. Sing to God. Sing in, sing in praise of his name. Sing in praise. In, in Mika, he said, they have blasphemed my name, they will know my name. In Isaiah 52, he says, I will bear my holy arm and they will know my name. Here he's saying now, sing in praise of his name. Extol him who rides on the clouds. Rejoice before him. His name is the Lord. A father to the fatherless, a defender of widows, is God in his holy dwelling. A father to the fatherless. So if you're feeling unfathered, if you're feeling that gap, I remember the day my dad died. I, it was so scary because I felt that gap in the morning. I did. I felt like something is missing. A covering is missing. But God is the father to the fatherless. And he's a defender of widows. And this statement always gets really surprises me. It says that God sets the lonely in families. And if you are lonely, speak this word because it is written. Remember, we're on a quest of what is written. What is written is that if you are lonely, you decree the word that God sets the lonely in families. Ask him to set you in a family. If you can see maybe a parent or somebody else is lonely as well, make this prayer for them. That God sets the lonelies in families. He gives them a community. He leads out the prisoners with singing. And I said, may this be a reality. And especially for those who are wrongly imprisoned. And may also the generational prisons we could be in be open. It always reminds me, every time I read Isaiah 61, it says that we, are, it says that we proclaim freedom for captives. Then it says we proclaim prison, freedom from prisoners in dungeons. And I don't know why this always comes into my spirit. That some of us are in prisons, yes, generational prisons, this is the word to speak to them, or that Isaiah 61, verse 1 to 9. But I always get the sense that some of us, the prison doors have been opened, but we have refused to walk out. And it can be true because sometimes we're so scared. This whole imprisonment, this whole bondage, this whole addiction, whatever it is, we're so used to it and we've learned to live life like that. We are okay. But God is not okay. That's not what he wanted for you. That's not the reason he gave his life and died for you. So recognize and decree that he's leading out prisoners with singing. 
and may he lead us out of generational prisoners with singing. Then it says the rebellious live in a sun-scorched land. And I just said, we'll just leave that there. It's God's word. The rebellious will live in a sun-scorched land. Then it talks about that you, God, went out before your people. Again, connected to Isaiah 45. It says you will go before us when you marched with them through the wilderness. You know, God has gone before us. He is with us in times of plenty and even as we have gone. And I felt that when it says when God has gone out before his people, there is movement. I'm a great believer in movement. I believe that when we are stuck, something is wrong. God is always moving. He says, I'm going from glory to glory. He's always moving us, you know. He kept moving the Israelites as they were getting closer into the promised land. He kept settling them in different tribes and different places. God is never still. God is always moving. He told Moses, come up higher. There's always a call to keep going, keep moving. So every time in the scripture when I see movement, I'm encouraged. And it says that God has gone before us. There's another scripture where he says, he thunders at the head of his army. He's not afraid to go out with his army. He doesn't stand behind or at some command station giving commands. He's with us. He's flowing with us. And it says, the earth shook and the heavens poured down rain before God, the one of Sinai, before God, the God of Israel. You gave abundant showers, O God. You refreshed your weary inheritance. And that's a prayer for today. Refresh us. And I'm so grateful when I see the, the Bible come alive like that because it talks about, it's been talking about a spiritual inheritance, a remnant and an inheritance. Now it's talking about a weary inheritance that refreshing will come from God. So that's my prayer today. Father, may there be a refreshing. May there be a pouring out on your inheritance. May you refresh everyone who's feeling weary, feeling tired, feeling they're at the end of their life. Pick them up, Father. Give them strength. Rain down refreshing. You know when it rains, there's such a refreshing, not only on the land and the ground, but even the smell and the atmosphere and the environment. Fill the environment with you in the name of Jesus Christ. Your people settled in it, and from your bounty, God, you provided for the poor. And I think that's such an important scripture for right now. That God provides for us out of the bounty, out of his overflow. May that be true of you right now. For everyone who needs it, that God provides out of his bounty for the poor. God provides for those who are poor in spirit, who are in soul, in, in physically, you know, financially, socially, whatever poverty you're experiencing, in leadership, in, in career. May God provide to you from his bounty. Say amen. He's refreshing us and he's providing from the bounty. And this also caught my attention. I actually highlighted it. That the Lord announces the word and the women who proclaim it are a mighty throng. I was like, hallelujah. I was like, you know, sometimes you ask, how come there's so many more women? Well, this is one scripture in the church, in the body of Christ. It says the Lord announces the word and the women who proclaim it are a mighty throng. I've always said, and it may not come out well, I may not be politically correct, but I feel there's nothing as dangerous as a woman who does not know the Lord. Eh? How? You must know Jesus, know him, pray for him. Because we're, we're naturals, we have, you have a spouse, you have children. You have, how? How do you not know the Lord? That, that is crazy. You're the one that covering, you're the one who's praying, you're the one who's directing, you're the one, even if your husband is not there, you're the one praying to God for him, for wisdom, for guidance. How? Can you be a woman who does not know the Lord? That's very dangerous, I think. For me, I think that if I was to count tragedies, that's one. Women must know God. They must serve God. They must plead. You know, every time I watch an, um, like an interview or something, and they're interviewing somebody famous or, or especially maybe I guess on the channels that I watch, they'll always talk about a praying mother or a praying grandmother. Always. The word is always. Never have I heard an interview where they didn't say my mother was praying, my grandmother was praying, a woman somewhere was praying. Now this is saying the Lord announces the word. Remember we started by saying this was about a word, I will not say a face, but it was about seven days of reading the word and becoming fat in the word and knowing what is written. So the Lord announces the word and the women who proclaim it are among. So it is your responsibility to proclaim the word. Again, kings and armies flee in haste. And the women at home divide the plunder. 
even while you sleep among the sheep pens. I love this. The wings of my dove are sheathed with silver, its feathers with shining gold. God will never lack as he's shepherding his sheep. There is silver and there is gold. There is provision out of that bounty and there is refreshing. I don't know whether you're encouraged, but I am. When the Almighty scattered the kings, hey, these kings are in trouble, in the land, it was like snow fallen on Mount Zalmon, Mount Bashan, majestic mountain, Mount Bashan, rugged mountains. Why gaze in envy, you rugged mountain, at the mountain where God chooses to reign, where the Lord himself will dwell forever? And he's talking about the chariots of God at 10,000 and 10,000. The Lord has come from Sinai into his sanctuary. When you ascend on high, you took many captives. He said when he, when, he, when, he, when, he, when he rose and he went into heaven, he took captivity captive. You received gifts from people, even from the rebellious, that you, God, might dwell there. Praise be to the Lord, to the God, our Savior, who daily bears our burdens. Our God is the God who saves. We've talked about saving. From the sovereign Lord comes escape from death. This is a message. Surely God will crush the heads of his enemies, the hairy crowns of those who go out in their sins. And I felt, let us again call on the name of the Lord, but let us also recognize the sins because God is coming to deliver those who go on in their sins is the warning. And so God, we're calling you to save us from sin, from evil, selfish men and women, including leaders, Deliver us and save us from poverty, from sickness, from disease, from plagues like the COVID-19 and the, and the coronavirus pandemic. Deliver us from, save us from pure, poor leadership, the unequitable distribution of resources, infant mortality, immorality, corruption, bribery, rape, molestation, depression, incest, from not living in dignity and allowing others to live in dignity. Oppression in all eight aspects, save us. From oppression spiritually, solically, physically, socially, financially, professionally, in leading self and in different geographical locations. And the Lord says, um, have I finished? Oppression in eight aspects, murder, curses, premature death, global bodies seeking to destroy this continent divisive politics, systemic poverty, and religious systems that do not serve your purpose. God, we are calling you to save us from all this sin. And the Lord says, I will bring them from Bashan, I will bring them from the depths of the sea, that your feet may wade in the blood of your foes, while the tongues of your dogs have their share. This is another part. He says, your procession, God, has come into view the procession of my God and King into the sanctuary. He is not hiding. This is a thread that has been common from Micah to Isaiah 52 to here we continue with Psalm 68. That God is not hiding. His procession is coming into full view. It will not be a, 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 a story of what happened. You will know God happened. You will be very aware that God happened. And sometimes when God gives such a warning, what is he trying to do? He's also trying to get you on the right side. Because remember, even his remnant, it's not that they are perfect. He's trying to get you to almost jump ship, get into the right side of this thing, and then stop. If you've, meant, if you've heard anything that's been mentioned here, that you are a, a one who does, stop. Stop it, because God is coming. He says in front are the singers, and one day I heard, praise the God in the great con congregation. He says there's a little tribe of Benjamin, and I wish I had another hour to preach about that. It's a little tribe of Benjamin. It's not the greatest tribe. It's a little tribe of Benjamin which is leading them, a great throng of Judah's princes, and the princes of Zebulun and Naphtali. And I love that Judah goes first. Judah always goes first in praise. And remember even Apostle Chuck Pierce said that Judah shall decree and declare a thing and it shall happen. What we have been doing is making declarations. Summon your power, God. Show us your strength. Our God, as you have done before. Summon your power. Show us your strength, our God, as you have done before. 
Because of your temple at Jerusalem, kings will bring you gifts. Rebuke the beasts among the reeds. That one reminds me of Isaiah 35, so you can read and decree Isaiah 35. And he said, scatter the nations who delight in war. And we're asking you that, Lord. Scatter the nations that delight in war. Scatter the individuals that delight in war. Scatter anyone who is trying to bring war on this continent because they gain from it. Scatter them in the name of Jesus. I can even say, scatter the nations that bring coronavirus, COVID-19, and all those pandemic and plagues, scatter them in the name of Jesus Christ. Show them that you are God. Let there be no doubt that you are God. And this continent, no. This African continent, what they have prayed and thought and tried to do, Father, you stop them in their tracks. It says, envoys will come from Egypt and Cush will submit herself to God. This is the third Sunday where we're hearing about submitting to God. The enemy fle fleeing and, and melting like wax and being blown away by smoke and God bearing his holy arm. This is serious business. Sing to God, you kingdoms. The fourth Sunday of sing. Sing, sing to God, you kingdoms of the earth. Sing praise to the Lord, to him who rides across the highest heavens, the ancient heavens, who thunders with a mighty voice. He's not whispering. He's thundering. Proclaim the power of God, and that's what we're proclaiming. We proclaim the power of God, whose majesty is over Israel, the Bible says, but we want to decree his majesty is over Kenya, over Africa, and whose power is in the heavens. Our power is your power. You, God, are awesome in your sanctuary. And the God of Israel, the God of Kenya, the God of Africa, gives power and strength to his people, and praise be to God. Hallelujah. I feel so energized, so fulfilled. I'm so grateful. I hope the messages have reached you. I hope they've been flowing. We started four Sundays ago. We started with Mika, then went to Isaiah 52, then went to Isaiah 52 verse 7, and today we're on Psalm 68. And there are still three more messages that I will come and do and we'll continue flowing in what God is speaking to us. It's time to take our position. We cannot be defeated. It's time to regain our identity. It's time for us to clothe ourselves with strength. It's time for the yoke to be broken off our neck by us knowing God and knowing who we are in God. This is not a passive position. It's a position that requires your action, your reading of the word, your declaring and, and decreeing of scripture, because when Jesus was tempted by Satan, he said, it is written three times. He said, it is written. It is written. This has got to be your response. No matter what is facing you, find a scripture, decree and declare, it is written. And what is written is the truth and it stands. And the Bible says, heaven and earth will pass away, but the word of God will never pass away. Get up and start reading the word, knowing the word concerning your situation. And Google is your friend. Just type into the search engine, scriptures for healing, scriptures for salvation, scriptures for stubborn situations. There's a scripture for everything. If you can't do that, pick up your Bible and say, God, speak to me and open until he speaks to you. Read the word. When you read the word, go to the commentaries. Biblical commentaries on that passage so that you understand it. When you read the word, also read it in context. Read all of it. Read what it's saying around it. That's why we looked at what it is saying in the whole of Isaiah 52. Then we focused, we homed in on Isaiah 52 verse 7. I hope you're excited. I am. I feel like we're living in exciting times. And I feel like God is showing up to fight for us. I think that's been the theme that God is showing up to fight for us. So... Let me lead you to Christ. Please say after me, you must enter salvation. That's the, it's like the, it's the first point. It's the first entry point for membership is salvation. Plug yourself into the power called God. So say after me, Lord Jesus Christ, I ask you to come into my life to be my Lord and Savior. 
I ask you to take over every area of my life. Connect me to your power, to your grace, and to your knowledge. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, I think all of this has been a prayer. Psalm 68 is an amazing prayer. It says, may God arise and may his enemies be scattered. May your foes flee from you. May they melt like wax before you. May they be blown away like smoke. And that's what my prayer is. On top of everything else that we have discussed today, Lord Jesus. Father, surround your people with grace and strength. Arm them with strength. Bear your holy arm. Come into full view in their lives to show them that you're fighting for them, Lord. Shepherd them, Lord. Lead and direct and guide them. Send them messengers to bring them good news, but make them messengers as well to take out the good news. I pray for mighty deliverances. I pray for shalom. And I pray for, pray for God to show up and to give them clarity and direction on the way to move forward. We honor you greatly, bless you greatly. Thank you for this ninth day of May. Happy Mother's Day to all mothers, Lord. Actually, what a lovely scripture that the women who hear the word of God and proclaim it are a mighty throne. May this be true of all our mothers all over the world in the name of Jesus Christ, even as we celebrate them on this amazing Mother's Day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you and happy birthday, mom. Bye.